Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another walk, and I'm with Lee Proudfoot, who Hi. has proudly taken me on, on his, a walk. On his feet. On, on, on his my feet. feet. <laughs> on my feet. This is the second of two videos taking a walk along, let me get this right, Holm... Lomhold Dingle. Yes. Or as it's pronounced around here, Lummel Dingle. Lummel Dingle. Yes. We'll go with that. We're, if you haven't seen the first one, do check that one out because that will, it will make sense. We've just come through this wonderful dingle, this little valley. Yeah. Along the Lyde Brook. Along the Lyde Brook. Lyde Brook, which is a beautiful little brook um, lined with uh, um, wild garlic mostly. And in the last one, I tried some of the very hot, peppery wild garlic and it was rather nice. Anyway, do check that bit out. We're carrying on. We're, we're heading to something quite special. We are. We're going to end at... Do you want me to tell you now? Or should yeah. we leave it? Yeah, no, we're, no, going to, we're going to walk through a place called the Rope Walk. The Rope Walk. And then we're going to end up going to the Quaker Burial Ground, which is the uh, place of rest for the Quaker community that lived in this valley, who were the Iron Masters and other members of the community. A very special place. We're going that way. Come along with us. So this is this the part of the rope walk that we're this walking? This is the rope walk. We're actually in... Um, why Why is it? Is it the rope walk as in traditionally yes. that they laid out ropes? It's originally on the path of a cartway that brought lime and other raw materials, limestone, from that direction. Yes. Down here. And we're walking very slightly downhill, down into the valley where Colbertdale Works was. So all the raw materials they needed for um, on cartways like this, in particular, as an example of the kind of thing that would have trundled down this flat route into the valley and they look uh, after uh, all the sort of way markers and routes through the various wooded valleys on the left we've actually got a, a meadow which is a very ancient meadow um, you see at the moment it's full of cowslips it is full of cowslips um, and they, they look absolutely wonderful if you came here at certain times of the year and also the meadow behind us you often find flocks of soya sheep not soya sheep no, soya sheep soya sheep uh, which is a very ancient british breed um, sgct use um, this place as a uh, whether they keep them and then they use the wool and they sell it locally oh and it's a very dark colored wool brilliant it's not, not particularly good and for that, that keeps things. the meadow down and it does and, and fertilized and fertilized yeah, yes absolutely. absolutely so it's a very ancient natural meadow if you come in later in the summer it's really high and absolutely beautiful oh wow amazing and on our right are the the woodlands which formed part of abraham darby's deer park so in a moment we're just going to come up at the beginning of a wall yeah which runs for quite a distance down towards the end of our route this was the deer park attached to abraham darby's and the darby family's later house they had two previous houses their last house was called sunnyside sadly demolished in the 1960s and there's housing estate on it now um, but this was essentially the the boundaries of their private estate okay. right. um, so there are quite it's useful timber as you can see there's a pile of uh, trees over there and um, there are also the occasional old specimen trees this one here in particular i'm not sure what variety it is but it, it's quite remarkable if you want to move around this way you can see it <laughs> What's the significance of the, the wall, Lee? Uh, well, this is the boundary of the Darby's family estate. So ah, Sunnyside, right. which is on that side of the wall, was their original house, or one of their later houses, which was demolished in the 60s. Oh, demolished. This is the edge of their um, sort of deer park and where they have the specimen trees in their own private sort of area. We saw, we saw, we glanced in, didn't we, just now, and we saw yeah. a magnificent lime yeah. tree, and then further along, a, a, a rather beautiful copper. Um, Indeed. And there's Copper some Beach. Horse chestnuts ahead of us as well, we're going to come up to in a moment, I think. This is one here, actually. Yeah, it's usually full of conkers on this road. Yes, I can track. imagine. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful track. D it is. Well, no, it, it wasn't really beautiful for most of its life. It was actually built primarily to transport the lime down from the quarries down into the, the, the dale. Um, but what this does now, it actually forms part of a series of walks very established walks that have been here since the 1700s. The Quaker Ironmasters, the Darbys, the Reynolds, the Fords were concerned about their employees spending their money in the ale houses on the Sabbath on their day off. So they actually laid some of the very earliest leisure routes in the country in the woodlands, primarily on the other side of the valley, but all over the place in, in Colbertdale. And they were called the Sabbath walks and they still exist. And you can still walk them. 
uh, they still have a kind of feel to them that you're out on a, uh, a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon perambulation. You'd be out on your finest. Oh. Been, been to service or church in the morning. Yes. Um, and if you're a Quaker, of course. Um, and they, they're still used now for dog walkers and, and long distance walkers and visitors to the area. We're just coming down to the end of, this was also called the rope walk. So I believe this was also used for the winding of rope, which would have been needed uh, in the foundries because you had things needed lifting. Yes. Um, but also, of course, when they were building the bridge, they would have needed huge quantities of rope right because this is pre-steam days when they're building the bridge you needed packs of horses and gangs of men gosh yes fueled by beer to lift these <laughs> to um, lift the heavy to weight. lift the heavy components of the bridge into place so if you look at some of the contemporary records of the the invoices and bills for building the bridge ropes is a very significant proportion of it yeah yes. and beer actually and, uh, oh and beer well i suppose you've got to <laughs> entice keeping them with something keeping them quenched we've got a lovely georgian property uh, yeah. just coming up one of many uh, and and another of those way markers Indeed. here um we well, may remember in the last video we had the ratchets the ratchets here uh, here it says a bit about it. rope walk up there so through this gate yeah. and not too far now to yeah. the, the Quakers burial ground. We're crossing um, what's called Derby Road, We're up there is Sunny, so on our right is Sunnyside, which uh, is now a housing estate built in the 60s. Uh, would have been the Derby's last house in the Dale. So the house in front of us um, was originally the Quaker meeting house, it was demolished and this was built in its place. Oh, right. Um, but the burial ground for the Quaker community is still here. I don't think we'll be able to go in, but you can still see through. Oh, um, there has been some issues with the, the steps and the stability of it. Oh, oh right. um, but it is quite remarkable. Yes, you, you you do get the feeling that you're going through somebody else's yes. uh, property, don't you? Somewhat. Just climbing up here, some more steps past these amazing Georgian buildings. I do love Georgian buildings tucked away like this. Plenty of them here. It's, uh, so the last burial, I believe, was in the 1920s, the last interment. I know that Michael Darby, who's the latest descendant of the Darby family, who opened the bridge back in January, actually, after the conservation project, he wants to be interred here. Oh, marvellous. So here we are. Oh, golly, here we go. So you can see in. We can't get in. There's a padlock here. And curiously, the gravestones are all along the side of the wall yep. but that doesn't denote where the graves are. It doesn't are. know there is a map behind you which actually shows you where they're buried and they're buried on top of each other there's no oh, really? um, hierarchy that the, there's a lot of well, not on top of each other but there's a lot of uh, dense amounts of yes. uh, burials. Good heavens. And it's going uphill. And it is going uphill. And on the top of the hill two redwood trees. Amazing. Which we can see across the whole of the dale which are beautiful. So you can see those redwoods and you know exactly where the burial ground yeah. is at any yeah. one point. Yeah. And, and there's uh, sycamore and limes and I think we saw some conquer trees en route. Yeah, it's a very what, peaceful place. What a stunning, yeah. stunning place. Thank you so much for, I'm out of breath now, <laughs> climbing up all those hills. Welcome and, to the step. Yes. <laughs> well, I guess that's, that's the whole of this place, isn't it? It's, it is. um, it's a very hilly place yeah. and certainly well worth exploring. It's a very condensed community, very small amount of area, but there's a lot of ways to get to the top. Yes. And they're usually steep. And, and if you've not seen any of our previous videos, you may not appreciate that um, when you come to the Iron Bridge Gorge, as it's now called, yeah. um, but formerly Colebrookdale, yeah. Uh, when it was a village close to Telford, the modern, the modern town of te town is or is it a city? It's a town. It is a, town, just yeah. a town. Um, don't just stop at the bridge and take a stroll at that. Come further afield and in because there's so many interesting there places are, to yeah. explore. I'm going to come back and do more, but unfortunately, uh, we've managed to do four of these videos today, dodging the rain. Yes. So I hope you've enjoyed them. If you haven't seen them all, do check them out. Lee absolutely brilliant thank you so welcome. much thank you you. you you work for english heritage i do you? yes yes i worked on the bridge last year as one of the historic property stewards wow uh, what a privilege putting trying to put the 
the story of what was happening over on the about on the bridge to those people that came to visit. Yes. And we're naturally quite disappointed when they get there. It was there covered and, up, and it's wasn't covered it? Covered up in a big plastic wrap. Which yes. Gosh, that enabled must have been. Uh, us to do the work more quickly than anticipated. Um, well, that's amazing. So do check out those videos. But yeah. for the moment, Lee, will you come back and escort me on another? I will gladly do. Oh, what a start! So there we go. That's that concludes my whistle stop tour around this wonderful part of the world in Shropshire but don't panic there'll be more uh, in the meantime don't forget to follow like subscribe become a patron support what I do if you can that would be great leave a comment tell me what you think and uh, thumbs up for Lee and the wonderful uh, guide that he's given me till the next time thank you Lee welcome thank you see you on Bye, the next everybody. one <laughs> Bye bye bye